Hi! So, um, as everyone can see, I'm alive. I am all in one piece. Um, so that's good. Uh, the city, at least my part of the city, is totally fine. Um, obviously, like, some areas of Queens and stuff like that are, you know, horrible and, well, horrible, if I could speak. And definitely, um, send your thoughts and prayers towards those people because they're having a really rough time. But, um, my neighborhood's actually fine. I never even lost power. Um, totally fine. Apologizing right now for the way I look. I kind of just been staying in bed watching One Tree Hill because there aren't any classes and since there were no classes Monday or Tuesday either, I have um, reverted into, you know, an awkward hobo state. But like, I didn't get any time off this summer, so try and forgive me. <laughs> Okay, um, so since I didn't have power, well, I had power, I didn't have internet, which, let's be honest, is the most important part of power, um, since I didn't have internet last night, or yesterday at all, um, I wasn't able to post a poem yesterday, so I'm posting two today, um, one that was already written, and one that I wrote, um, this morning. So, uh, I'm gonna start with the first one, um, it's called Mitochondrial Eve, um, and I'll probably explain a couple of things after it's done, um, because it's kind of a complex piece of work. No, not really, but it has a couple of references that I want people to understand, because I think they're cool. Um, okay, so this is Mitochondrial Eve. They call me original. I scoff at that. I am a sad composite. Puzzle pieces crunched together in an iron fist until the edges bend to fit. Nothing of me is original. I am the combined effort of everyone I've ever known, and it shows the endless brittleness of cardboard straining, soggy. I am unfit to house the homeless. They show me the tree, and I watch the perfect juicy flesh weigh heavy on the branches, shifting in the wind like the peach pit and the pendulum. My eyes play tricks on me, bring it closer and farther, in and out. I check the sky for Lucy and her diamonds. My hand reaches like cranes reach, not like the birds with their long, elegant necks, but like yellow, angry construction, brow-beating buildings until they are as unfit as me. I stop an inch away, waiting for a sign. It never comes, I'll have to decide this on my own. Arched in midair, my arms lose feeling, but somewhere in my chest I gain it. Am I good enough? Am I evil enough? Am I wise enough? Am I naive enough? Am I strong enough? Am I weak enough? Slowly, so slowly, I shift atom by atom back to the ground. My edges hold nothing but bad fits. No decisions will be made today. Okay, so um, this poem, I liked it a lot when I wrote it. I'm not thinking I like it as much anymore. Whoa, camera freaking out again. I'm really sorry, guys. But stop, so awkward. Ah! be less awkward if I were like wearing makeup or had brushed my hair sometime in the last like three days. Anyway, um, so a couple of references. First, the title, Mitochondrial Eve. Um, sorry, the wind just kind of gusted. Mitochondrial Eve was actually, um, she's theoretical. Uh, it's not like a real thing, I guess, but it's a scientific term. Um, basically, it's the idea that all human beings came from um, one person that had evolved to a certain point. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, um, that evolution had taken us to the point of human beings, and then everybody, um, descended from the human beings that were the first human beings, if that makes any sense. So mitochondrial Eve is technically the mother of human race, um, which obviously brings it back to the biblical Eve, so I wanted to talk about that a bit, I guess. Um, so that was the whole, they call me original, um, because she's supposed to be the first, um, but she's, uh, she considers herself, like, a sad composite of a bunch of puzzle pieces that don't really fit, um, which is evolution, all of that. Um, and then I use a quote, nothing of me is original, I'm the combined effort of everyone I've ever known. Um, that's actually from one of my favorite books by Chuck Palahniuk, um, and I'll probably link to, like, Amazon or something. It's called Invisible Monsters, and literally, like, one of my favorite books ever written. This is really freaky. Eh. Um, 
anyway, um, so that part is explained. Um, and then I have a couple more references. Um, I say the peach pit and the pendulum. Um, uh, the pit and the pendulum is a reference to Edgar Allan Poe's uh, spooky story, which makes it kind of okay for Halloween, I guess. Um, and obviously, I being Raven, am very into Poe, so definitely um, read him if you have not. It's definitely necessary. Um, then I make a Beatles reference. I say I check the sky for Lucy and her diamonds, which is a reference to Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, uh, which is a great song. Um, I think that's it. Um, I think this poem is much better on the page than as performance piece, which is the, the case with a lot of my poems, um, just because of the different spellings and stuff like that that I use. I use a lot of puns in this poem. Uh, for instance, I say, I shift atom by atom back to the ground, and it says, I spelled the first atom, A-T-O-M, by the second atom, A-D-A-M. Um, obviously bring it back to the biblical thing. So anyway, um, I guess I tried to make it complex, and maybe it's not. Um, but the next poem, uh, definitely much more gave in to performance, and uh, it's about the storm that just happened. Um, I kind of personified it, so I'm not sure what I'll call this one, probably just like storm or something. I haven't been very creative with my titles lately, you guys should help me out with that. Okay, so I'll read this one. There is nothing quite so beautiful as a vengeful woman who swoops through the city streets like some sort of evil villain plucking the leaves from Central Park's spiny finger branches. You play my universe like it's your harp. You swirl angrily above Ursula's tentacles trailing behind you, and we watch you circle, a vulture, over our heads. This is not ours, none of it. You compel our skyscrapers to sway, you snap cranes, you uproot family trees, and we watch captivated while you rattle our windows and force electricity through our veins while you grind clouds together until we shake while you scream and screech metal against glass while you remind us that we are tiny impotent creatures with paper money and cotton armor um so actually i really 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 love storms um anybody who knows me knows that uh, definitely somebody who would be out in it if I could be, but I promised my stepmother that I wouldn't go outside, so I actually haven't been outside since Sunday afternoon, which is kind of horrifyingly sad. Um, we might go out later to, like, the grocery store or something. It'll be really exciting. Um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, what did I want to mention? Oh, I said, um, you snap cranes. And that actually happened um, on 57th Street and Broadway, I believe, which is only a couple blocks away from me. Um, I'm on 60th and Columbus. So, uh, yeah, it was really close by, and basically, like, the 75 foot crane was just dangling off the side of this building. So, um, it just kind of showed the power of the storm. And skyscrapers um, swaying. I don't think that happened during this storm, but in 1938, which they were saying was the last storm this big, um, the Empire State Building swayed back and forth. So that's where that came from. Um, as always, please leave a comment if you have time or you'd like to. This is a really long video. Um, and let me know if you have any ideas for poems. I'm doing this once a day. That's a lot of poetry, even for me, so definitely send me your ideas and comments. Alright, have a good day!